Yo, what's good, everybody? That actually came off pretty good. <laughs> Hope you're having a blessed day. So as you guys probably know, if you guys have been looking at the NFL, it seems that every single year, the NFL has to have one player that it's just the league's villain. This year, it's Colin Kaepernick. In the past, it used to be Tom Brady when the whole deflate gate was going on. And a couple other players like the Dominican Sue and Aqib Tlaib, they've been villains for their own respective reasons on the field. However, what if he became a villain in the NFL before ever playing a single down of football? Well, that happened to Michael Sam, the NFL's first, and as of September 15th, it's only openly gay player. Now, real quick, I want to ask you guys a question before I start presenting the evidence of what happened to Michael Sam. Do you think that NFL teams colluded like Colin Kaepernick said to try and get Michael Sam out of the league? Or do you guys think that Michael Sam just simply did not have the talent to stay in the NFL? So with that all being said, let's dive into what happened to Michael Sam, the NFL's first and only openly gay football player. Michael Allen Sam Jr. was born January 7th, 1990. He attended Hitchcock High School in Hitchcock, Texas. And you know what? Michael Sam balled out in high school. From Michael Sam's freshman to senior year he was a first team all district defensive lineman and in his junior and senior year he was also a first team all district offensive lineman he even showed that he could hold his own against top ranked competition when he went up against then the four star michael brockers when michael sam was only a two star recruit and michael sam held his own in that game and like i said coming out of high school michael sam was a two star recruit coming out of high school he had offers from arizona state colorado state and houston however when it was all said and done michael sam chose to go to the university of missouri to continue playing football. Michael Sam redshirted his true freshman year in college. However, he came out to play in his redshirt freshman year. In that year, he had three and a half sacks, 24 tackles, as well as seven tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, and a blocked field goal. However, getting only three and a half sacks over a season is simply not going to get it done and it's not going to help you get to the NFL. Well, all of that changed his senior year. Michael Sam's stats went up across the board. He went from 22 tackles in his junior year to 47 in his senior year. He went from seven tackles in a loss in his junior year to 18 his senior year and he went from four and a half sacks his junior year to 10 sacks in his senior year and with a performance like that that secured him the sec defensive player of the year yeah that's right i'm talking about the sec which most of america would consider one of the most defensively dominant leagues in the country and he was the best defensive player out of all the teams in the sec so you'd expect for this dude to be a first or a second round pick right however michael sam's whole nfl career changed in one day in february February 9th of 2014 was the day that Michael Sam publicly came out and said that he was a gay football player. But you see, you gotta look at the timing. Michael Sam came out as gay in February, and the NFL draft is in April, which means that he had two months to basically have his draft stock go from a potential first or a second round pick to a seventh round pick. And this is why I asked you guys earlier in the video, do you guys think that he just didn't have the talent or do you think that the NFL was trying to push him out of the league? Because I have a stat that might show that the NFL might have been having some foul play when it comes to Michael Sam. I went and looked back at the last 10 SEC defensive players of the year and I wanted to see where they ended up getting drafted. Let me present the evidence. 2018, Roquan Smith, first round, eighth overall pick. 2017, Jonathan Allen, first round, 17th overall pick. 2016, Reggie Ragaland, second round, 41st overall pick. 2015, Michael Sam's own teammate who ended up winning SEC Player of the Year the next year, Shane Ray, first round, 23rd overall pick. 2013, Jarvis Jones, first round, 17th overall. Oh, do you, do you guys still believe me yet? Oh, don't, don't worry, I got a couple more for you guys, don't worry. 2012, Morris Claiborne, first round, sixth overall pick. Don't know where I got a couple more for you. 2011, Patrick Peterson, first round, fifth overall pick. 2010, Rolando McLean, first round, eighth overall pick. 2010, Eric Berry, first round, fifth overall pick. And finally, 2008, Glenn Dorsey, first round, fifth overall pick. So going back and looking at the last 10 SEC players of the year, only one of them wasn't drafted in the first round, and they were drafted in the second round. Most of them were drafted in the first 15 picks of the draft. So how is it, other than Michael Sam being gay, that he's drafted in the seventh round and is the 249th overall pick? I mean, I'm just saying, we're looking at 10 years of evidence that SEC Defensive Players of the Year are almost a lock for the first or the second round. So how is it that when the first gay player comes out, he's drafted in the seventh round? Hmm. Well, let's keep on digging and see what we can find. And well, yes, Michael Sam being gay and him being the first gay player, obviously the league has to adjust to that. 
However, Michael Sam did not help himself with his combine performance. Michael Sam ran a 4.91 second 40 yard dash and had a 25 and a half inch vertical. He also put up 17 reps on the bench press. Now, obviously those aren't horrible numbers, but any other defensive lineman, if they would have put up those stats, yeah, they're gonna be falling a little bit in the draft boards. So I'm not gonna say that only him being gay is the reason why he fell so low. However, he was drafted by the Rams, so he does have an NFL team now, so now he could just go out there and go ball out, right? Uh, not so much. So as most of you guys probably know, football is a very masculine sport. So when you're bringing up controversies like being gay in a locker room, obviously it's gonna rub some people the wrong way. Michael Sam said, and I quote, I had to prove myself. I had to show that I was one of the guys. However, Michael Sam was cut from the Rams, even though he was top five in the team's sacks during the preseason. Now, after Michael Sam short stint with the Rams, he was eventually picked up by the Cowboys. However, he did not end up making the final team roster. I don't know, to me, it just seems like Michael Sam was never really given a full chance. I mean, most of these guys in college who are getting some of the top awards, they find a way to stay into the league longer simply because they won those awards. Johnny Manziel was in the league longer than he should have been simply because teams are hoping that he would be able to find that Heisman Trophy season that he had back in college. Simply put, teams will be more patient with you if you've shown that you could ball out in the past. However, it seems like that wasn't allotted to Michael Sam. After being cut from the Cowboys, that is the last time that Michael Sam has ever seen an NFL football field. However, he did go up to go play with the Montreal Alouettes in the CFL, which also made him the first openly gay football player in the CFL. However, after shortly joining the team, he said that he needed to step away for a little bit because he had to deal with some mental health issues, which I give him props for because not a lot of people can admit that. Now again, I'm not saying that Michael Sam should have had a secured roster spot that because he was gay, he should have got any preferential treatment. No, I've seen a ton of first round talents turn to bust, so I can only imagine if he was a defensive player of the year that he might not have been able to pan it out in the NFL. I'm just asking, was he given a fair chance? Again, when you look at the past 10 SEC Defensive Player of the Year awards, and I'm not saying that if you win the award, you're an automatic lock for the first or the second round, but the stats do show that. Excluding Michael Sam, the past 10 SEC Defensive Player of the Year award winners, nine of them were first round picks and only one was a second round pick. And most of those guys were top 15 picks. And yet Michael Sam was drafted in the seventh round. Nowadays, it seems like Michael Sam has hung up the cleats and he's moving towards more of a motivational speaker role. Now let me talk to you guys real quick because I need to break some things down. According to my YouTube analytics, over 95% of my channel is male. And because this is a football channel, I'm guessing that a ton of you guys are also playing football football as well. This is all I have to say. Be aware that one of your teammates might be going through something that you have no idea about and that they've been hiding. As a guy, it's okay to let your friends know that you love them. Oh, but Marcus, aren't you Christian? Shouldn't you not like gay people? The Bible that I read says that we've been forgiven for all of our sins. All right, I can hear you guys commenting right now. I'm not saying that being gay is a sin or not, because I do not know. However, if it is a sin, we've already been forgiven for it. So we're good. I mean, from the time that Michael Sam played his last football game in Missouri to the time that draft day came around, the only thing that changed was him coming out as gay. He didn't forget how to play football. He didn't forget how to pass rush. He didn't forget any of those things. So that was the only thing that changed. I also have a secret for you guys. If a guy is gay, that doesn't automatically mean that they like you. Oh, wow. We're, we're, we're really breaking down barriers here. So mainly all I'm trying to say right here is just be loving of everyone on your team. Make sure that you're always asking your friends and your homies how they're doing. Ask the people that don't really get talked to that much, ask them how they're doing because honestly, just you asking them how they're doing could mean a whole world to them that you have no idea about. All right, so to wrap up this video, I'm going to ask you guys the same question that I asked you guys in the beginning of the video. Do you guys think that the NFL owners came together and tried to push Michael Sam out of the league or do you guys think that Michael Sam just simply did not have the talent to stay in the NFL? So with all of that being said, that is what happened to Michael Sam, the NFL's first and only openly gay football player. All right, you guys, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave this video a like. Yo, come get this video to 400 likes, because that lets me know that you guys enjoyed this video. Also, don't forget to comment down below any other players that you guys want me to see, because that's how I know who you guys want me to watch so we can help grow this channel. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications so you guys can stay on top of all the videos that i am coming out with hey <laughs> yeah yeah all right you guys with it all being said hope that you guys all have a blessed rest of your day and i'll catch you guys in the next video Ciao.